little splicing machine and get ready for five crazy cool epic awesome funny weird wild unexpected true facts about the craziest animal mashups in the world number five possibly the most famous animal mashup the liger a liger is a cross between a male lion and a female tiger hence the name liger these hybrid cats are actually the largest of all living felines the females can be up to 10 feet long and weigh more than 700 pounds Oh, and of course, don't confuse the liger with the tigon, which is a cross between a female lion and a male tiger, because they're actually totally different. A liger has a face that looks more like a lion's, while a tigon's face looks more like a tiger. And those aren't the only big cat hybrids out there. A leopon is a cross between a leopard and a lion, and a jaguelep is a cross between a jaguar and a leopard. So we've clearly got cross-breeding big cat hybrids down, but when will they master the house cat hybrid? Maybe half cat, half little brother? Mmm, definitely makes him cuter. Number four, the most common and practical animal hybrid that you might not have known was a mashup in the first place, the mule. That's right, a mule is a cross between a horse and a donkey, and they've been bred for over 5,000 years. Ancient Egyptians are the first known people to use mules as their preferred pack animals. Pharaohs would send teams on expeditions to mine turquoise, and the miners would mark the route with carvings of boats and mules, which is how we know they had them. There are two types of mules. The male mule, which is a cross between a male donkey, called a jack, and a female horse, called a mare. The hinny is much harder to breed, and is a cross between a female donkey, called a jenny, and a male horse, called a stallion. And mules have stuck around all the way to the modern day. While widespread use of mules has declined in the past 40 years or so, they're still used to transport cargo in rugged, roadless regions around the world. Oh, and to uh, take tours to the Grand Canyon, of course. Number three, the Zebroid. And no, it's not a zebra on steroids. That would be terrifying. Ugh, gross. It's actually a cross between a zebra and either a horse or a donkey. Zebroid is a generic name for all zebra hybrids. There are Zorses, Zonkeys, Zonies, and a ton of other zany combinations. Zebroids typically resemble their non-zebra parent, but have stripes like a zebra, making them quite a sight. The stripes don't usually cover the whole body, often just the legs, neck, head, or back half of the body. Zebroids were first bred in Africa because the hybrids are more resistant to disease, are better behaved, and easier to control than zebras. They're also shaped like horses, which makes buying a saddle easier since most saddles are shaped to fit on a horse in the first place. Sure, they might be useful, but personally, I like them better because they look like a horse dressed up as a zebra for Halloween. Number two, Growler Bears. This one is the offspring of, you probably guessed it, a grizzly bear and a polar bear. Unlike the other hybrids on the list, growler bears can actually occur naturally in the wild. A lot of experts think that climate change might force polar bears from their frozen habitats into warmer climates where they mate with grizzly bears. Growler bears have been bred for many years in captivity, but their existence in the wild wasn't confirmed until 2006 when a growler bear was spotted in Idaho. Their bodies are smaller than polar bears, but larger than grizzlies, and their hair is a shade somewhere between the white of a polar bear and the brown of a grizzly which makes for a beautiful family portrait. And finally, our number one animal mashup ever, killer bees! And the origin of this hybrid? Well, it's a pretty crazy story. These bees were intentionally created to try to breed a more tame and manageable bee, but it went totally wrong! The killer bees, also called Africanized honeybees, were made by crossing a European honeybee with an African bee. They were first introduced to Brazil in the 1950s, but in 1957, 26 swarms escaped quarantine and spread throughout South and Central America, making hybrid killer bee babies in the wild. Run for your lives! Killer bees are much more aggressive and defensive than their parents, which can make for a deadly combination if the bees feel threatened, since they usually attack and defend themselves in massive swarms. Oh, and if you think you're safe because you don't live in South or Central America, think again! These killer bees first reached the United States in October 1990 and were discovered as far north as Lafayette, California in September 2015. Now that's t -t 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 terrifying! So if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go hide in an underground vault for the rest of eternity. Want more animal mashups? Well then we've got a treat for you. Check out this clip from the new DreamWorks animation series, Dawn of the Croods. Okay, Gran has now gone a step too far. That's usually our signal to wrap it up. Want to see more? Well, you're in luck. The whole first season is available on Netflix this December 24th. I'm your host, and if you need anything, I'll be hiding in this bunker with my Zebroid, Zachary. Wait, uh, 
Do you hear that sound? One of the killer bees must have followed us into the vault. I'm sorry, Zachary. It's every man for themselves. <laughs> hey, hey, wait, wait. You're, you're much faster than me. Wait, wait up, Zachary. Wait!